production of X-ray spectrum. At the end of this video, you should know to explain the differences between continuous spectrum and characteristic spectrum and explain the production of X-ray spectrum. So, let's come to the X-ray tube where X-ray is produced. This is a diagram of X-ray tube. Let's see how is the inside part of X-ray tube looks like. The basic components in X-ray tube are filament cathode, copper anode, potential difference and target. The filament cathode is function to emit electrons. The copper anode is to hold the target. The potential difference across the tube is very high to ensure electron generation, while the target is the place where electrons will collide and produce X-ray. The tube is vacuumed to ensure that the accelerated electrons move without collide with air molecules. When the tungsten filament is heated by the current flowing through it, the increased energy enables the electrons to be released from the filament. The electrons are attracted towards the positively charged anode and hit the tungsten target with maximum energy. As the electrons bombard the target, they interact via Brehm's Strahlung and characteristic interaction which result in the energy is converted into heat and X-rays photons. The X-ray photons are released in a beam out of the window of the tube. As a result, this formed the X-ray image production. The X-ray spectrum consists of continuous spectrum and characteristic spectrum. Continuous spectrum is produced when the electrons are decelerated by the target atoms, while characteristic spectrum is produced during electron transition processes that occur when an inner shell electron is released from target atom. In continuous spectrum, the intensities vary smoothly with wavelength. While characteristic spectrum consists of sharp peaks of high intensity at a specific wavelength, which are unaffected by the voltage of the X-ray tube. In short, the peaks are due to electrons from cathode knocking out inner shell electrons from target atoms. When vacant shells are refilled by free electrons, X-rays are emitted. The electron ejected from cathode collide with the free electron at orbit K. The free electron is knocked out from the orbit. There is now an empty space at orbit K. The electron from higher energy level, orbit L moves to fill up the space. The K series peak which consists of K alpha and K beta are the strongest. These peaks occur when the innermost shell, the K shell is refilled by electrons from outer shell. And its high energy is released as characteristic X-ray. Look carefully at this diagram so that you may have a better understanding on the transition of electron from higher energy level shell to the lower energy level shell. K alpha 1, K alpha 2 and K beta 1 are the strongest among K series. Thus they are widely used for X-ray diffraction. These are the references used when producing this video. Thank you for your attention.